السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله الصلاة حي على الصلاة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praises due to Allah we bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his final messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who listen to the best of speech, the book of Allah and follow his commandments. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who come to know the best of ways the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us amongst his followers. Ya Ahbab Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi kathiran ma yuhadithuna al-Qur'ana amma yuhibbuhu allahu wa amma la yuhibbuhu allahu hatta yata'amala al-mu'minu fima yuhibbuhu allahu fayati bihi wa yata'jannab ma la yuhibbuhu al-mawla jalla wa alam. Brothers and sisters, throughout the Qur'an 
there is a repetitive theme, a theme that is repeated and that is Allah continuously telling us about the things and the people and the kind of people that He loves and the kind of things and people that He does not love. Keeping in mind, nowhere in the Qur'an we are told that Allah hates. So we are told positively Allah does not love. And even in psychology they speak about the positive language that you choose. Rather than saying, I don't want this, say it's better to say I prefer not to. Rather than saying I hate, it is best that you say I don't like. That is just proper. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala employs this with us. So we are told about the things that Allah loves, so that as believers we want to be that. <clears throat> and the things that Allah does not love, so again as believers that we keep away from it. Simply because of the power of our emotions. Emotions are powerful brothers and sisters. And we are not only social beings, Emotions are embedded in us. <laughs> Emotions color our perception, the way, we see, the way we see things. They influence our attitudes, the way we feel about things. They mold our motives. Why do we do what we do? They dictate our actions. What are we going to do as a result of our emotions and eventually they dominate our lives. They mold, they dictate, they dominate, they color, and they also influence. So it says pay attention to our emotions. And the most powerful emotion, the most beautiful emotion, are the feelings of love. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing this about us, He said, let me tell you, the kind of people that Allah loves and the kind of people that Allah does not love so that you may seek to get closer to me. Rawa al-Hakim wa tirmidhi wa li-imamu Ahmad wa al-Tabarani an Mu'adh ibn Jabal yuqal ta'akhara anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an salat al-Fajr hatta kidna nara ayn al-Shams tirmidhi an al-Hakim al-Tabarani and Imam Ahmad, they collected a hadith, an incident. During the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, Here we are at the masjid waiting for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to come for the Fajr morning prayers. And he said the Prophet ﷺ came in late. It was getting lighter and lighter, and everybody is awaiting what the Prophet ﷺ is doing. And he's not here yet. Said the Prophet ﷺ came in a hurry. He came very quickly, putting his clothes on, and said, And then when he led the prayers, the prayers were very speedy, short, because the time was approaching. He said, when he salamed out of the salah, he told people, remain where you are. And then the Prophet looked at them, said, let me tell you why I came in late today. And it's a long hadith, ended up with the Prophet وسلم, praying, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offering the Prophet, peace be upon him, Ya Muhammad, sal. Said, oh Muhammad, ask, pray. What is it that you are going to pray for? فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَتَرْكَ الْمُنْكَرَاتِ وَحُبَّ الْمَسَاكِينَ أَلَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ حُبَّكَ وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ وَحُبَّ الْعَمَلَ الَّذِي يُقَرِّبُنِي إِلَى حُبِّكَ Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, I pray that I be of those who are committed to the doing of good. فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ Oh Allah, I pray that I be of those who are committed to shun away evil. تَرْكَ الْمُنْكَرَاتِ وَحُبَّ الْمَسَاكِينَ Allah put in my heart the love for the poor and the needy. Then he goes on to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. He said, Oh Allah, I ask for your love. I want to be loved by you. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. And I ask for the love of those who love you. Wa hubba al-amal al-lazhi yuqarribuni ila hubbik. And the love of every action that will make me attain 
being loved by you. Sallu ala Rasulullah. And then you look into the list. Whom does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love? And whom does he not love? And then by following the Quran, we find the kind of people that Allah loves to be seven kind of people. Ya'ul. Allah yuhibbu al-muhsineen. Allah loves the doers of good. Allah loves good. And those who are committed to the doing of good, Allah loves them. Allah yuhibbu al-muhsineen. Allah yuhibbu al-tawabeen. Allah loves those who keep coming back to Him, repenting to Him, those who repent. And that's why they say, Allah does not love us because we are complete. Allah loves us because He is complete. Allah loves us not because we are perfect, despite our imperfection, Allah loves us. So it says that, Allah loves those who make poor choices and then they go back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah not only accepts them, but Allah loves them as well. And then we're told, Allah Allah loves those who purify themselves physically as well as spiritually. Allah Allah loves those who are conscious of Him. Allah Allah loves those who put um, their trust in Him. Allah Allah loves those who are just and they promote justice and equity. And then Allah Those when they find a worthy cause, said Allah loves their togetherness. These are the kind of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Seven kind of people. What is interesting though is, when we look into the Quran and then we find out whom does Allah not love or like? <clears throat> we are told, Allah la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Allah does not love those who transgress and they cross the bounds. Allah la yuhibbul fasad. Allah does not love corruption. La yuhibbul mufsideen. Allah la yuhibbul mufsideen. Allah does not love those who spread corruption or literally speaking the corruptors and by the way this is the only action in the quran that's mentioned by him allah la yuhibbul fasad this is the only action that's mentioned everything that we will be looking at are the kind of people by default of course if allah does not love for example if allah does not love those who transgress then transgression is something that allah does not love However, Allah says that He does not like corruption, nor does He like the people who spread corruption. Sometimes we may have feelings of, I really want to give it to Him, or I really want to do that to them. But as long as you did not do it, Allah said, you're okay. But as far as corruption itself, it is inherently evil. Allah does not like it. And then we're told, Allah does not love kulla kafarin afim. Every ingrate, ungrateful sinner. Allah la yuhibbul kafirin. Allah does not love the people who know the truth to be the truth and they choose to reject it. La yuhibbul zalimin. Allah does not love those who transgress or wrong other people. Kulla muhtalin fakhur. Allah does not love every boastful, empty pride holder kind of a person. Allah la yuhibbul farihin. Allah does not like people who exult, who are joyous and joyful about things that are in vain. That kind of joy, Allah does not appreciate. And then we are told, Kulla khawanin kafur. Allah does not love every treacherous, ungrateful person. Allah la yuhibbu man kana khawanin afima. They are treacherous and they are sinful. Allah la yuhibbu khainin. Allah does not love people who are treacherous. And again, by means of this, we find out that about the people who are least loved by Allah, not loved by Allah, are people who are guilty of corruption, are people who are treacherous. Corruption and treachery, Allah does not love. So much so, that when Allah said, who is the hereafter for? You know, all religions, all people, we are all claiming the hereafter belongs to us. The hereafter is for the Muslims for the Christians, for the chosen people, for these people, Allah said, let me settle this for you. 
نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والعاقبة للمتقين As far as the happy state in the hereafter it is reserved exclusively for those who wish not to exalt themselves on earth nor are they guilty of corruption and indeed the future belongs to those who are God conscious that is whom the future belongs to but as far as the hereafter Allah said those who are not indulged in gaze in self grandeur type of a behavior and they are not guilty of corruption Allah said the hereafter a happy state in the hereafter is reserved for you say this brothers and sisters by looking how much facade there is around us how much corruption there is around us how much treachery is taking place around us and I'm specifically going to speak about one place in Syria hearing about this small city Madaya 42,000 people that are literally in a big prison and the people are dying because of starvation. What is going on? Well, see, they're surrounded by all these politicians. They're surrounded by this group and that group, and they're surrounded by this. It's a big open-air prison, and nobody can escape. And you see images coming from that part of the world where you can count the ribs of people there. So is there a shortage of food? No, but a lot of corrupt people around them and unfortunately many times using the name of religion. I don't care what they name themselves. Don't care what sect they belong to. But the end result is, man, the people are dying there. The children are dying there. Allah la yuhibbu al-fasad, man. Allah does not love corruption. La yuhibbu al-mufsideen. He does not love those who spread corruption. La yuhibbu al Allah does not love those who transgress and oppress other people and you are guilty of each and every single one of them. But people out there, they can be doing this and somehow they believe that they have the approval of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or they have the approval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is clearly telling you, you do this, you're not loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you continue to do something like this? And of course, again, you've got on the other hand, stupid lunatics, man. And this, as far as we are concerned, it's like every single time somebody does something stupid, and the first thing, and I'm sorry, Wallahi, it's not that we need to talk about this. But just coming here and you turn on the news, say, Inshallah, everything is okay, and there's breaking news, man, going on. What is happening? Philadelphia, last night. Coppers got in their car, stopping there. Somebody walks up to them and shoots them three times. And what are they doing in the process? Chanting, Allahu Akbar, I am doing this for ISIS. Shooting a police officer and saying, I'm doing this for ISIS. How? What is, where, is, where is Allah in this process? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not tell us that Allah, la kulla khawan. Allah loves not the people who are treacherous? Allah did not say that Allah does not love people who are sinful. Man, here's an innocent soul. What have they done to you to do something like this? The sad part is when they equate it with our deen. That is the part that gets to us. Police officers are shot every day. And it's one of the most dangerous jobs that anybody can have. But you know what, sadly, we attribute these behaviors are, you know, the, the gangs are doing it, these people are doing it, but the sad part is when somebody does it and then of Islam comes up. And by the way, breaking news is El Pacho, this big, uh, giant drug cartel in Mexico has been caught. That's not even the big news now at this point. That is not the big news at this point. The big news is somebody is being shot and it was a Muslim who shot them. Supposedly in the interview, my allegiance is to Allah and my allegiance is to Allah. And we listen to say, please, do you know the Allah that you're talking about? Do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by no means, man, appreciates or endorses or approves of what it is that you're doing? 
If anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah la yuhibbul fasad. Allah does not like corruption. So, but do you know how many corrupt people are out there? Ya akhi, eliminate corruption, but you cannot be using corrupt methods in order to eliminate corruption. Then you're just a corrupter as well. That is why we say, even if the ends are noble, the means themselves, they must be noble. The means must be noble as well. So as we listen to this, say, Allah, I really want to be loved by you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do good. Be of the muhsineen. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the things that will bring us closer to being loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But never assume, brothers and sisters, never assume that I wrong somehow somebody and somehow at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is loving me. And that's why in the hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns us and he says, وَكَمْ مِنْ قَارِئٍ يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَالْقُرْآنُ يَلْعَبُ He says, and how many people? They will be reciting the Qur'an and at the same time the Qur'an is cursing them. Imagine this, somebody is reading, وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And the Qur'an is saying, that is exactly you. Allah does not love the corruptors, those who spread corruption. And the Qur'an is speaking back and saying, that is you, man. Allahu la yuhibbu al-zalimeen. Those who wrong other people and the Qur'an is saying, that is you. You're not being loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do this. So what we see here is that, wallahi, goodness extended to people, that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And throughout this, where are the prayers? Where is the fasting? Where is the going to the pilgrimage? How come it's not mentioned here? How come we're not told that Allah does not love them because they don't pray? Or Allah loves them because they pray? These are rituals. If they have any benefit, they benefit the individual. What Allah cares about is how are we to those who are around us? In the Sufi tradition, they have a story. And please remember, this is a story. But that is how they teach. And the story's got a metaphor into it. It's a beautiful story. It says this very righteous man passed away. And his son sees his father in the dream. And supposedly the father comes to the son in the dream to give him an update as far as what did he see. He said, son, reckoning is tough. He said, he said son, it is tough. It is beyond what we have imagined. He said, Father, tell me what happened. He said, I stood before the Lord. And the Lord said to me, what have you brought? بماذا أتيت? قال يا ربي أربعون سنة كل صلواتي في جمعة. He said, I said, oh my Lord, for the past 40 years, every single prayer of mine has been in congregation. I've, I've been in the masjid for every single prayer in the past 40 years. فقال لي رب ما قبلت. And the Lord said to me, not accepted. قلت يا ربي أربعون سنة أصوم رمضان. I said, my Lord, for the past 40 years, not a single day of Ramadan have I missed. فقال ربي ما قبلت. And my Lord said to me, not accepted. قلت يا ربي أربعون سنة أنا أصوم الاثنين والخميس. Said my Lord. For the past 40 years, every Monday and Thursday, I am fasting. فَقَالَ رَبِّي مَا قَبِلْتْ I'm not accepted from you. قُلْتُ يَا رَبِّي حَجَجْتُ بَيْتَكَ عَشْرَ مَرَّاتِ I have done Hajj ten times, my Lord. And the Lord said to me, مَا قَبِلْتْ I have not accepted. قَالْ فَأَيْقَنْتُ أَنِّي هَادِكْ So at that point, it became certain to me that I am doomed. فَقَالَ رَبِّي انظر. And my Lord said to me, Look, what else have you done? And then he said, I kept looking into what have I done. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَبِّي كُنْتُ أَسِيرُ يَوْمًا I said, Oh my Lord, one day I was walking by. فَرَأَيْتُ غُصْنًا عَلَى الطَّرِيقِ And I saw a branch that fell down. فَقُلْتُ يُؤْذِي الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I said, It will probably harm the people who pass by. So I removed it from the path of the people. فَقَالَ رَبِّي قَبِلْتُ هَذَا And at that point, the Lord said to me, this is the action that I have accepted from you. 
This is not to undermine prayers and fasting and pilgrimage. But brothers and sisters, what we are told about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is telling us, do these things. But what really counts is not the things, the rituals themselves, but the outcome of it. What kind of a person are you to those who are around you? Because if you're not good to them, then the rituals will not be there to save you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru. Innahu huwa al-ghafur al-ghafur. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من في آثاره المصطفى يا أحباب المصطفى صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والله that is such a nice beautiful verse to live by if you want a share in the hereafter Allah is telling us the hereafter is reserved exclusively for those who wish not to exalt themselves in false pride on this earth, nor do they work for the spreading of corruption. We have got very uncompromising position. To these two things, a believer is always clear about them. I wish I can tell you that the people of Syria would be helped, especially in that city, Madaya, if we were to give money. Unfortunately, the problem is not money. There is enough food in the world today to feed every single person at 2,700 calories a day. The abundance of food has never been the problem. It is not the food production, it is the food distribution that has been a problem. You know more people die of hunger than they do of AIDS, HIV, Malaria, tuberculosis, combined. More people die out of hunger than all these wicked diseases combined every single day. That is one person dying every 10 seconds because of hunger. And then, subhanAllah, you look into this and you say, these people do not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are good to people, not those who... who are guilty of making people's lives difficult. Yaqul al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahumma Man waliya li amri ummati shay'an Fashakka alayhim Allahumma fashquq alayhim Allahumma shquq alayhim ajma'in ya Rabbil Alayhim Wallahi Allahumma yashquq alayhim ya Rabbil He said who Allah, he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed He said who has ever been given Any kind of authority over my ummah and made their lives difficult as a result of that authority, oh Allah, make their lives difficult. Yeah. Now this is the Prophet ﷺ praying against these kind of people yeah. who make people's lives difficult, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the more difficulty they impose on people, Allah imposes difficulty on them. Yeah. And may we see that difficulty being imposed on them. Simply because of what they have been to people, they have doing to people around around us so unfortunately the problem is not solved when we say please give money please do but unfortunately that is not how that problem is going to be solved but what we want to do is we want to be people who do good to those who are around us and we have inshallah two ways of doing so you know in Irvine there is a prison where most of the people held there are people who are held on um, immigration related charges. These are people who came through the southern border and they have been in, in jail here. And we're told that the biggest number at this point are Muslims in the prison. People are re reaching out to us saying, look, where is your community? Can you please come and visit these people? What do you mean? Well, this is somebody who's just attempted to come to the US and they came from Mauritania. They have no relatives. <laughs> they have been in prison for the past 10 months and they're going crazy. They have not had a single visitor come to see them. Somebody from Somalia, they've been over a year in that place and nobody has visited them. Personally, I went and I saw somebody who's been there for over three years and I haven't had anybody come to visit me. 
So what we're looking for is volunteers who can go and visit the people. It's a very simple process. All you have to do is just go there. It is exactly from our masjid, less than nine minutes drive. Be there, you have half an hour with these people. They don't want money. They don't want you to make phone calls on their behalf. All they want is just look at somebody and just chit chat with somebody. So inshallah, Saturday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 7.45 till 5 o'clock. Uh, not Mondays. Saturday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday is when the visitations are open. Anybody can go. Anybody can go. So please inshallah look into it. And that goes to the sisters as well. There are sisters who are held in that place as well. So inshallah that is one way that we can do. The other one is that we have winter clothes drive. But remember, when we give these clothes, there is a requirement at this point. The clothes must be new. The clothes must be new. Say, what's wrong with my old ones? Ya akhi, the idea is to restore hope and dignity. Giving me the stuff that you don't want does not restore dignity. It may be useful, but the idea is that we want to be useful and we want to restore dignity. So unless you are going to be bringing in something new, please hold on to it. We do not want it. And inshallah it will go on from today until next um, Friday, inshallah do so. And then we have other activities that are taking place. We do have a youth group tonight and we do have a reporter that will be attending with our youth group from MBC. <coughs> And what they want to do is talk to our youth about Islamophobia. So please, inshallah, make sure that our youth are here today um, after Isha for the, for the event. Also, inshallah, uh, remember the blood drive that is taking place at the end of this, of this month. Please do register. And also, inshallah, remember that our barbecue for tomorrow is being canceled. Please also keep in your dua um, uh, our brother... Abdul Bashir or Abdul Bashir Muhammad who passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Allahumma Ya Rabbi innaka afuun kareem un tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma farraj hamma al-mahmumeen. Wa nafiz karba al-makrubeen. Wa amdi al-dayna anil madineen. Allahumma arham mawtana. Wa shfi mardana. Wa fukka asrana. Wa afi mubtalana. Wa khtum bil baqiyati salihati ajalana. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al-nar. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وأكبر